everybody! Thank you so much for joining me today. This is my first time sitting down to shoot a video after new baby. And he's right over there. He's in his little bed thingy here that's kind of like portable and I just brought him up today and I thought, okay, Nana's watching the girls in the next room. Maybe he will just sleep here. And uh, maybe he's so used to hearing me talking about makeup in the womb that this will just all seem normal and he'll just chill this whole video. But what I wanted to share was what I got in that Sephora sale. And so I've got some of that here and I've also got a few things that I got outside of the sale that I just thought I'd lump in together with it. But honestly, I just feel like I'm barely holding things together here. This is so like, my old routine has definitely not been established yet just cause you know, babies wanna eat at all times and different times of the day and night. And it's just like hard to get back on that again. But I'm doing my best and I've been dying to get up here and shoot another video. So I really wanna be here and I wanna be doing this. So it feels really good. So yeah, we're just gonna talk some makeup right now. Um, the first thing that I got in the sale is is this cool looking foundation. It's from RMS Beauty and it's called the Uncover Up Cream Foundation. And I just thought it sounded interesting and kind of unique. And it says this luxurious complexion loving foundation blends flawlessly into the skin for a youthful dewy finish. And I do have that on today um, with some highlight on top. So this foundation can't take full credit for the glow, but it really does have, I think a really fresh look. In my last vlog where I was kind of like um, shooting a future Emily clip, where I was just sitting and kind of recapping a couple things for you. I had this on my skin and several people commented that I looked very fresh and very luminous. And it was this foundation at that time with very minimal setting product on it. And it really lasted surprisingly well on me. It's a very rich foundation. It has a thickness to it, um, a, carries a lot of moisture. As you see it in here, I've got it in the shade 11.5. And when I put it all over my skin and kind of start to blend it in, it has kind of a peachy look to it, but all in all, once it blends in, I mean, I feel like it's totally working for my overall skin tone and it actually functions to brighten up my under eyes even better than a lot of things. But as you can see, you can do like the Dairy Queen Blizzard test with it. Nothing's falling out there. It's thick. I mean, you can create stiff peaks as you put your finger in there. I will definitely be demoing that in an upcoming video to show you exactly how it goes on, but there's a thickness. And if you want to blend it in with a brush, I think you need to use a pretty dense one that can really work it into the skin. Or today I tried it for the first time with a beauty blender and I thought that worked quite well actually. But it's just important to note that it's not thick and dry, it's thick and very moisturizing. And it really does look great on my skin. So I'm enjoying that. I think as the weather kind of dries out my skin a bit more, it's gonna be even better. But today I really made an effort to set it just kind of like in the T-zone with my Laura Mercier pressed translucent powder, which I love. I just think it's so handy. And yeah, I'm pleased with the coverage. I guess I haven't commented a lot on the coverage. I think it's um, not quite totally full. I think it's a strong medium coverage, but by the time you get it blended in, it just has such a natural look. I'm still seeing freckles through it. So it's kind of the foundation that you're going to put it on, feel like it has pretty good coverage, but you're still going to want to take that concealer into certain areas, I think. But this is fun. This has been fun to experiment with. I feel like I'm still kind of tweaking exactly the amount that works best for me. But I think overall it's kind of a little goes a long way type product. Here's another thing I got from the sale. I've never tried anything from Patrick Ta and I really was drawn in by the monochrome moment velvet blushes. And I've got my little paw prints all over it as you can see. Very reflective there. Very mirrored looking. But I really like the look of all the tones. It was hard to just choose one. But I got the one called She's Seductive. It was it seemed to be the deepest one I guess. But still very neutral looking and I'm always a little intrigued by blushes like this because I think they can look so gorgeous on the skin once they sheer out a little bit. Um, this one has kind of a toasty vibe to it. Kind of a bronzer-ish look but definitely a hint of dusty rose in there as well. So I'm wearing this as my blush today and then it kind of occurred to me that it's very similar to CoverGirl's Brick Rose which I just recently kind of got into. This one's just a little more rosy. I actually might prefer the Brick Rose just a little bit more just for the overall tone, but I'm going to keep wearing the Patrick Todd. In fact, let's just add a little bit on so you can really see um, where the color's coming from on my skin. 
See how it really does have a bronzer kind of look, but really a bit more rosiness than that. And yeah, it is fully matte, so any glow on my cheeks is coming from my highlight, which is the Maybelline Master Chrome today in the Rose Gold Molten shade. But yeah, I like that blush. I think it's the kind of thing that I'll get a lot of use out of because it just looks so natural and fresh with just about anything. But it's kind of crazy how close it is to the CoverGirl Cheekers in Brick Rose. Okay, now Huda. The Huda stuff has been been drawing me in. Before the sale even started, I went ahead and I got all three of the nude palettes. Um, these just really caught my eye. I love the compact size, and I just thought each color scheme, I, I didn't see how I could skip one of them. I really wanted them all. So I got them in, and I've tried looks now with each of them. I have the light palette, which is really just, I, I think, a very delicate eye palette. Uh, your matte shades in here are right up here with this kind of peachy pink. You've got a dusty lavender, a cream color, and then a couple of mattes down here as well. The rest are shimmers that I think, I feel like they apply all right with a brush, and they really lay down nicely on top of primer, but I inevitably always want to go in like with my finger and dab a little on with my fingertip on top of it all because that's just the purest color. You really get the most impact that way. But do you know what I mean when I say this is a delicate palette? Nothing in here runs too deep and dark, and the shimmers, I mean, I really do like that there's this lilac kind of pop in here. It's a really rare thing to find, I think, in a palette labeled nude to have something like that. And I think that's cool and it sets it apart and it really caught my eye from the beginning and made me want to have this. Uh-oh, somebody toning up over there. So I would say I like the light palette. I want to play with it a little more and see if I can stretch it some and get a few different kinds of looks with it. But it's not really my favorite of the three. Then we've got the medium. So here the nude is kind of like this light light sort of pinky nude color. The medium is this toasty honey looking palette from the outside and this one's got I think a lot of brown going on, different tones of brown, different depth levels, and then kind of coppery and golden punches. Also the rosiness is really coming out in this one as well. This shade down here is especially interesting because it has sort of a duochrome feel. It looks rosy at times, other times it looks more golden. Nothing in here is too light and bright. Just compared to the light one, as you can see, it's a step down. It's like the lights were just turned down on this one a little bit. And so that's what you'd expect, I think, in terms of this whole lineup. And I like it. I feel like with the large neutral palette landscape we have, um, I don't turn out any wildly different looking kinds of looks with this. And I think it would have had a little more versatility if they would have thrown in at least one lighter shade. It would have kind of allowed for some layering and some different stuff going on. Um, but it's a like, not a real love there with the medium. But the one that I actually am enjoying the most is the Rich palette. And this one just Ooh, it's got some tones in here that I'm just loving so much. I really like this deep dark shade here, which at a glance you'd say, well, that's dark brown, but I see some for sure plumminess coming out of it, especially as it overlaps with some of these um, shimmers here. We've got a real distinct rosy vibe with this one. I found myself really wanting to take these kinds of shades to the crease, but at the same time, they've also thrown in this borderline kind of terracotta reddish brown. I just really enjoy the look that I came out with. I have a lot of this color on the lid, and it gives you sort of a golden peach effect that you can pair with the deeper plums and some of the other rosy shimmers, and I think it just creates a really fantastic look, especially for this time of year. If you're looking to go a bit deeper, maybe with your eye look and more dramatic, like there's no reason why any skin tone can't grab for any of these different palettes. And like I said, they all appeal to me on different levels, but I think the rich is definitely going to be my favorite favorite. If you're really into these and you'd like to see maybe a look actually demonstrated from each one, let me know because I think that might be a fun thing to do. But here's the other Huda thing that I just, I couldn't ignore it. The Mercury Retrograde Palette everything about this from the packaging to the color scheme inside. Like I just found it to be very unique and different and just 
I don't know, calling my name. I really wanted to try this. We've got everything from turquoise in here to some really pretty and I think kind of unique purpley shades. There's warm, there's cool, there's gold. Um, I really like the balance of light, medium, and dark in here. You know, you've got some light shimmers that I think are important as far as layering goes. And then down to some really nice dark shades in a couple of tones that I absolutely love. Um, this one, again, with looking like a dark, like black and brown maybe, but it really has some plum in it. And then this burgundy here, great to have. Love working in those kinds of tones this time of year. You could do a fully matte, very satisfying look with this palette. Blend things out with some of this peachy shade. You've got your dark color, maybe a light matte on the lid. But then if you start experimenting with some of these shimmers, again, I feel kind of the same way as I do with these where I'll try putting it on with the brush. I will have a certain level of satisfaction with brush application, but ultimately I want to go in and just use my finger with that shade because it's just the most satisfying lay down of color. You know what I'm saying? I've used this two times. I've barely scratched the surface. I don't even feel like I'm worthy of like talking about it yet, try, even trying to give a review because it can do so much more than I've tapped into so far. I haven't really played with the golds much um, or the blues up here either. So I think it's just a palette with a lot of possibilities. I really like Huda's matte texture. And again, with the shimmers, they're not all exactly the same. Some are more sparkly like this nebula shade. You might glance at it and say, well, that's a glitter, but it's not like um, some of the other glitters I think that have been in her other palettes. It seems to me a little bit more eyeshadowy, or at least the way it applies it is. You wouldn't need a glitter glue to make that color work. You know what I mean? And then you've got some that are just like more soft shimmers, just apply like a great shimmery eyeshadow. Pigmentation is wonderful. Again, color scheme is, I think, creative and unique. So it drew me in big time and it's even prettier in person. Other thing I got from the sale, sorry, had to readjust here. Um, the brand Lawless, this is something I've not experimented with at all, but I have heard really positive reviews on their palette called The One. And when I saw that they have The Little One, um, I like little things, <laughs> number one, I, the cuteness factor there, but I just thought it would be a great way to sample the product. I think only $25, eight shade palette. Now it is, nothing really crazy new and different. We can all admit that this color scheme is not like wildly wow OMG, but it did apply great. Um, some beautiful mattes, a really nice range in here. It is kind of rare to get a palette this size and you've got everything ranging from your light, like just off-white bone color all the way to black as well as a dark brown. You know, the mid-tones are covered, a couple of shimmers. It's a really balanced palette for only being eight shades, and I thought the quality was phenomenal. It does make me a little intrigued to perhaps try the larger palette, but something I want to kind of test this up against would be like the um, Too Faced Hot Buttered Rum palette. Similar color scheme, but this one might have a little more versatility, like I said, going all the way to black here. That could be a great liner shade. This could be a great brow shade for someone like me. So I'm enjoying it so far. I think it's something where you look at this and you say, well, I've got those shades in a lot of different palettes, but is it worth it to me to have the small size that's very compact, very travel friendly? You know, you got to ask yourself that. But my question was, how good is this brand's eyeshadow? And I think it's absolutely great. So let's see, one more thing makeup wise here to tell you about. And this, I feel like I got as a result of peer pressure um, and more so than my own personal interest. Um, it's the Fenty Beauty Glossy Posse. I gotta say, Glossy Posse is probably the greatest name of a product. Like, I, I wish I could have come out with a lip gloss set at some point in time and thought to name it that. But it's the Fenty Glosses. You're getting five of them in minis, and I feel like there was a lot of buzz about this when I was asking somewhere along the line, what holiday kits are you interested in? So many people said this. So I thought, okay, I'll try it out. I have a couple of these gloss bombs. I have the Fussy shade and the other one that like came out before that. And I'm not like wild about this gloss texture. I feel like it's very thick and it borders on almost a little bit annoying. Like it's not sticky, but it's just really thick. And I don't know, they're all pretty sheer. I'm not just like jumping up and down. Today I'm wearing like the bright pink. And if this gives you any indication, you know, it's not that 
pronounced on the lips. By the time that shears out, it's just looking like barely their pink, right? So, I mean, I would have liked personally, for my own preference, a little more color payoff out of something like that. I've also worn the hot chocolate shade here, which again, it's not going as deep and dark. It's sheer. If you do like sheer glosses, if you like the texture of these, maybe you're into this. It does give you the shade called Fussy, which is very popular, really, and part of the regular line. There's this light shade here called Confetti. I think I'm just going to have to do a little try on of all of these for you so you can see them. And then we've got a coral shade here called Cheeky. And if you look closely at all of these, you can see a certain amount of actual sparkle in there. It's not any sort of a texture deal that you're going to feel on your lips like, oh, that's gritty. But there is sparkle embedded in the gloss that I think makes them look extra shiny. So no complaints on shine, no complaints on stickiness, but it's just, they're, they're kind of thick. You really know that they're there. I feel like people have gone gaga over this formula and I've always sat back and thought well you know it's all right but I don't love it that's just my personal take you're gonna have to look at this and say do I love this gloss formula if so it might be worth it to you to get this set of minis that includes some shades you've never seen before it does come in a nice tin you could take this little like velvet insert out and continue to use this for a number of things. But I don't know, I'm having kind of a, it's just okay for me dog moment on that. Now, two more things that I got, which are both downstairs. And as I said, I'm kind of barely holding things together for this video. So let's just uh, pop up some pics and I'll talk about them. So one thing I got here was the warm apple cider donut uh, body wash from Philosophy. Every time the holidays roll around, I like to get something from Philosophy. And this is so good. I use this in the shower hour last night. I love the smell. I love the um, amount of cinnamon that I'm picking up on here, but also overall kind of a warmth to the scent. Um, the baked good idea is definitely coming through for me. I love the quality of all the philosophy like shower gels, which are actually shampoo shower gel bubble bath. Um, they lather up really well. I feel like you could double them as like sort of a shaving cream type product if you want to, but I was just super pleased with this scent. It's something that I felt like I continued to smell on my skin a little bit even after the shower. I know they come out with some great sets. I may still get a set of some sort, but I just thought, wow. The name in itself, Warm Apple Cider Donut, like who, who can read that and not go ahead and go for it? It sounded great to me. The bottle is actually really, really adorable too. So I'm glad I picked that up. That was a definite success. And then from the pharmacy brand, you guys know I love the Honey Grail product. It's literally like the only thing I use skincare wise at nighttime as my moisturizer. I love that stuff so much. I feel like it has really improved my skin. The hydration level is amazing. I do feel like I've seen a decrease actually in the look of fine lines on my skin. It just is a wonderful product. I think if you're looking to get by with only one thing, like that's an amazing thing to use. And I saw that they have this set called um, the Sweet Dream Set, and it does include a small size of the Honey Grail as well as a couple of other products that I was curious about. It comes with the Clean Bee Ultra Gentle Facial Cleanser and for some reason at a glance I was expecting this to be an oil. It's not an oil, it's just kind of like a gel cleanser and it is very gentle. I was shocked at how well it actually removed a full face of makeup just with a little residue on the eyes. Like I got in there with it. I really tried to like remove everything and I felt like the eyes just needed a little extra attention when all was said and done. But I check myself. I grab one of my um, little Equate face wipes and I go over everything and I see how well did that cleanser do it. And it actually got off like all traces of the eyeshadow of my foundation and all that. So I do feel it is very gentle, but yet really effective at makeup removal. So that was cool to see. And then the Honeymoon Glow. Um, when I've raved about Honey Grail, there have always been at least a few people who chime in and say, you've got to try the Honeymoon Glow. That product is an AHA resurfacing night serum. And they say to only use it like two to three times a week. So I used it last night for the first time. So I really can't say anything about the results or any kind of big review on that product, but I'm excited to see how that works sort of incorporated with the Honey Grail. And like I said, that comes with this set in just a smaller size. So it was great to get that set through the sale and kind of get a discount on it. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I can't believe we made it through 
through with the sleeping baby the entire time. That's awesome. If you have any requests, let me know. I'm still like chugging through some different um, holiday kits and just using them when I can. And I'll definitely want to pass along some reviews there. I've really been going for a lot of my like multitasking palettes as well. I have that new It Cosmetics one that's like this year's new beauty book. And I definitely want to share a review and a look with that because it does have some differences from last year's for sure. So thank you guys again for your time. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.